Reflecting on, uh, reflecting on the demerits of cherishing oneself, and then number three is reflecting on the benefit of cherishing others. Reflect the benefit of cherishing others. Um, so for for this, what we do is that <clears throat> the Buddha then said that the say. The Buddha said, Ningse means the feeling of loving, the feeling of love and affection, feeling the loving kindness or the feeling of love and affection. The feeling of love and affection um, makes you achieve, makes you accomplish all what you want, what you need. Uh, the Buddha at one point in the Sutra unraveling the Intention Sutra. In the Sutra, unraveling the Intention Sutra, the Buddha said that Bodhisattvas may not necessarily train in many things. They train in one thing, and everything will, everything good will come in their palms. And what is that one thing? The Buddha rhetorically replied that it is the great compassion. So with compassion, all the good things automatically are attracted to oneself. So therefore, the the thinking about the merits of cherishing others, this is so precious, so precious. And particularly related to the, okay, so this one, so all what we have thought about today, reflecting on the demerits of cherishing oneself, you reverse that, you reverse that, and then reflect on the merits of cherishing others. The more you cherish others, and of course, questions are the air. The more you cherish others, the more you compass, show compassion towards others, and other people they take advantage of me you know, all these questions are coming there right so for that uh, we can do that as a part of question answer session and the point is that we require what is known as the skillful compassion skillful compassion it's not just compassion skillful compassion compassion which is which is accompanied by skillfulness which is complemented by skillfulness where you have the compassion, you're able to give benefit to others. Meanwhile, other people, they cannot take advantage of you. This is known as skillful compassion. And on top of that, the compassion where the others reap the maximum benefit from you and you also reap the <coughs> maximum benefit. This is known as the skillful compassion. So with this, the same reflecting on cherishing, the benefits of cherishing others. So finally, by, okay, so this one thing. Then the next, what is next? Step number 
Four. What's step number four? Taking, Taking the suffering of others with emphasis on okay. compassion. <clears throat> okay. So here, step number four and five are known as the practice of Tonglen. Practice Tonglen. The more you think of the, the steps one, two, three, and then steps the the seven, seven step seven and step one, two, three, the practice of Tonglen becomes more effective. Practice Tonglen, step number four and five become more effective. So okay, step the first taking the suffering of others on you with the emphasis of love and kindness. So seeing that beings are suffering terribly, beings are suffering, then you take the you do the practice of the taking of suffering. And Tonglen practice, there are so many versions of the air. It's not that one is correct and others are wrong. Tonglen practice, there are so many versions. So that the one which is very commonly or one which the that we could learn here. I said the first taking the suffering. Suffering there are three kinds. As you know, suffering there are three kinds. One is the suffering of suffering. Number two is suffering change. Number three is pervasive condition suffering. Three three sufferings. Because there are three sufferings, then one way of taking the suffering is by taking the first the three sufferings in, in sequence. First you take the suffering suffering. So when you do that, as you breathe in. As you breathe in, you imagine that the all the sufferings, the manifest suffering, suffering, suffering of the other beings, they come in the form of in the form of black suit, black, very dirty, the torrents, very forceful river, like this gushing in through your left nostril. Left nostril gushing in, and then it goes into your towards your heart, and the heart imagine that the self-centered attitude is staying so relaxed. Imagine the self-centered attitude is sitting inside your heart, very relaxed. And then suddenly this this very dirty water, dirty, very black suit, very dirty. And if you can think, if it if it's all right for you, then you think of the, the snakes, scorpions and so forth into this dirty water. They can, they go in and then they eat up your they eat up your say the self-centered attitude and they eat up your say the, the heart. Imagine that it's eating up everything inside you. What do you feel? You feel a fear. You feel some kind of shock and a fear. When that happens, the self-centered attitude is undermined. Self-centered attitude is undermined. So this is how we should do. You take the suffering for all others, manifest suffering like sickness, aging, death, pain of losing near and dear ones, and all these problems. For example, say the that the <coughs> The fish, the crabs in the first hotel. In the first hotel, the fish and the crab. So the they just take it directly and then chop them, then we boil them directly in the boiling the oil. So you can think of you know, so these imagine that they suffering and then those in the hospitals, hospices, and in hands of the terrorists, in hands of the of the, the slaughterhouse, all these you can Imagine that all this suffering, they take the form of the, the black suit, scorpions, snakes and so forth. Then they, they just come towards you, you are sucking through in the form of uh, the torrents gushing through your left nostril. And as you breathe in, imagine that all these sufferings, like they, come in, they come in the form of the scorpions, snakes and so forth. They actually literally, they eat your, say, the heart. Like this, and then you feel like this, a uh, kind of the shocking feeling, feeling of the say the the, the, the in, intense fear. When that happens, the self-centered attitude is attacked. Self-centered attitude is attacked. And imagine that self-centered attitude is also there. So because of this, self-centered attitude is consumed by this, and all these dirty water they go down underneath the ground through your the body, legs, then the, the feet and underground, they all go down, right? You take it like three times, take all the suffering, the manifest suffering, right? Okay. Number two, taking this suffering change. Suffering change is what? The baits. 
or the Bei Cao, the pleasant feeling, the ordinary contaminated pleasant feelings, they serve like a bait for us. They serve like a bait for us to be trapped in samsara. You imagine that you are taking all the bait-like suffering change from all sentient beings. You take them again in the form of the, the black, the, the soot, and the, the, the uh, fossil torrents of the black soot, snakes, scorpions, and so forth, entering to your left nostril, and then do it like three times. And again, you feel that the, the heart inside is being eaten up. So what do you feel? You feel that so much of fear, intense fear, comes to you. Okay. Then next one is you take the the pervasive condition suffering. Pervasive condition suffering in the form of losing freedom, loss of freedom, loss of freedom. Pervasive condition suffering. Okay. By the way, pervasive condition suffering. What do you understand by pervasive condition suffering? Can you give me some examples? What do you? Okay. Give me an example of pervasive conditions suffering. Anyone? Anyone? Pervasive conditions suffering. Anyone? A bot. A suffering of the body. Okay, suffering of the body is the, the first suffering, suffering, suffering. Right? What is the pervasive condition suffering? Is Oceana? Okay, involuntary birth. Involuntary birth in samsara. Nico? Uh, for example, being in the God's realm, experiencing only bliss, <coughs> but still being um, subject to karma and afflictions. He will be reborn again, again, again. Okay, let's say, the, to be very precise, say, being under the force of karma, mm -hmm. being under the control of the karma and the afflictions. Very good. Okay, so pervasive condition suffering. One is, as Osiana said, the involuntary birth in samsara. Involuntary birth in samsara. This is one example of illustration, one illustration of pervasive condition suffering. And the second one, as Nico said, is that we don't have the freedom, loss of freedom, loss of freedom, or in other words, we under the control, we under the control of contaminated karmas and afflictions. Being under the control of contaminated karmas and afflictions, this is pervasive condition suffering. Okay, how many of you, how many of you know why these two are known as the pervasive Conditioned suffering. You're getting it? One, it has three elements. Pervasive, conditioned, suffering. Why is it suffering one? Why is it pervasive? Why is it conditioned? Why is it known as suffering? Why is it known as pervasive? Why is it known as conditioned? This we have to know. Okay, why is it known as suffering? Anyone? Okay, so the involuntary. Involuntary means you don't have the freedom. You're getting it? Okay, which is better? To have freedom is better, not to have freedom is better. <laughs> to have freedom is better. Loss of freedom is misery, right? This is what we've learned. Loss of freedom is misery. Involuntary birth, meaning you don't have the freedom to take birth. Automatically you take birth. Loss of, loss of, loss of freedom. Likewise, being under the control of contaminated karmas and afflictions. You don't have the freedom. You are determined by the contaminated karmas and afflictions. So loss of freedom. But this is condition of suffering. Why that is suffering is because it is marked by the loss of freedom. Loss of freedom is misery. Therefore, it is suffering. Right? Pervasive condition suffering suffering because it is marked by loss of freedom. One. <clears throat> Why is it known as pervasive? Anyone? Why is it known as pervasive? What's it? Okay. Samsara. A samsara is divided into three realms, desire realm, form realm, and formless realm, three realms. So, the, this suffering, of the three suffering, what are the three sufferings? Suffering, suffering, suffering change, and pervasive condition suffering. So, the first two suffering, they are not, they, they don't exist across the three realms, they don't exist. First suffering is only in the desire realm. First suffering, suffering, suffering is only in the 
desire realm. So therefore, it is not pervasive. Pervasive means it spreads. It does not spread all three realms. It is only in the desire realm, the first one. Second, of, uh, second one is, is with the desire realm, desire realm, and the form realm, form realm, the second one, form realm, of the second, second realm, which is form, form realm. Form realm is actually the God realm. God realm, they are two, form realm, form, both are God realm, God. And then the desire realm also, there's a God. Desire realm, there's a God. That God and the God of the form and formless, there's a huge difference. God of the desire realm is a very simple God, right? And the God of form and formless, you will, you will take birth there only if you have a very strong, very powerful, a meditative concentration practice. Because in the desire realm for God and goddesses, in the desire realm, you don't need powerful samadhi practice. You don't need that. But for the form and formless realm, to take birth there, you require a very intense samadhi meditative concentration practice. Okay. So the form realm is divided into four. Form second one. Second realm, the form realm is divided into four. And the third one, Formless is also divided into four. You're getting it? So, this what is the second? The first suffering exists where? Which of the three realms? First suffering. Yeah. Only the desire realm, not in the form and form. So, therefore, it is not pervasive. <laughs> pervasive meaning which pervades all three realms. Now, what is the second suffering? <laughs> suffering change. <laughs> suffering change exists in the form realm, also in the no, form. Yeah. suffering change exists in the desire realm and also in the form realm. Within form, there are four. Of the form, suffering change exists in the first three, not the fourth one. First three of the form realm, suffering change. It is not, it, it does not exist in the fourth one and it does not exist in the formless realm. Because which suffering change does not the word pervade in all three realms. It exists only in the desire realm and the form realm. You can get first three form realm. Oh, what's the third one? Pervasive condition suffering. So the pervasive condition suffering like involuntary birth, being under the control of contaminant causes and afflictions. So these two sufferings, these two sufferings exists in all three realms. It exists in all three realms. So therefore, this suffering is known as pervasive. It's known as pervasive. You're getting it? So now it is suffering because it is marked by loss of freedom. Why it is pervasive? Because it pervades in all three realms. What is this? Conditioned. Conditioned meaning that we, we are conditioned by the contaminant karmas and the afflictions. We're conditioned, right? We cannot behave in our own ways. We're conditioned by the contempt karmas and afflictions. So therefore, we don't have the freedom, loss of freedom. This is known as the pervasive condition suffering. You're getting it? Okay. But this now, what we do is that the practice of, practice of taking the suffering of others, the third category, taking the suffering of the involuntary birth in samsara and the involuntary, the, the loss of freedom, because of under the, the control of contempt comes afflictions. Again, you take them from all the sentient beings, from all the sentient beings, you take them, all the samsaric beings, you take them in the form of the black suit, black suit, gushing through your left nostril, and then again in the form of the snake, scrub and so forth, the eating of your heart inside, and then you feel uneasiness, you feel this the fear, so forth. The itchy feeling, right? The itchy feeling can come to you when you imagine that it's eating up your heart and so forth. But the itchy feeling, the painful feeling that happens, it is attacking your self centered attitude. Okay, this is one thing. So, in the end, we'll do the practice. In the end, we'll do the practice. So, this is how we take the suffering of others with emphasis on loving, with emphasis on compassion. You're getting it? Feeling so compassionate towards all beings, wishing that you. All the sentient beings, all samsaric sentient beings, may you be free from suffering, may you be free from the cause of suffering. With this in mind, then you take this suffering, 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 suffering change, and pervasive condition suffering. Okay, this.
This is what you should be doing, right? And then, precisely the same, when you go through any difficulties, when you go through any difficulties, for example, say the, uh, say uh, you have, you go through a pain of losing a very affectionate near and dear ones, then you go through so much of pain, and imagine that how many people are going through the same pain, losing, losing the near and dear ones. Imagine that all of these pains I'm taking, I'm taking from all of them. While I'm, while I'm experiencing this pain myself, may this experience of the pain suffice, may this experience of pain suffices experiencing all others experience of pain. May that, may this suffice the fruitioning of the pains of others upon myself, that may others not suffer the same pain. May what I'm experiencing, that suffices, or that the finishes, that finishes, that exhausts the karma of others going through this pain. You take it by taking that all pains on yourself. Okay. This is the taking. Taking some of others with emphasis on compassion. Okay. In the end, we'll do all these two together. Now, next. Okay, I think we will do this first. Huh? Okay, uh, I think we'll do this practice first, then we'll go to the giving. Right? Okay, set up properly. What we do is that as we breathe in, right, as we breathe in, we take all the first suffering of suffering, we take all suffering of suffering, and say, you know, actual practice, say, the suffering that you have, the manifest suffering that you've seen in others, that you've seen in others, in the hospitals, you can think of the, the hotels, where the fish, the crabs, and then in the slaughterhouse, in the terrace, in the hospitals, in the hospices, so where the people went through difficulties, and then the accidents in the, the, the roads, then they say this, the murder cases, then the theft, the robbery, all these you can think of whatever is more prominent. It is not necessary. Always you should do the same thing. Not necessary. You can change it. You can change it. Whatever is more the something so alive that you can imagine taking it. Okay. So when you breathe in, breathe in deeply. As you breathe in, imagine that you are taking the suffering of suffering. All suffering, suffering, any form that you can think of: sickness, aging, death. Then the, the, the slaughterhouse, the terrorists, the hospices, hospitals, the murder, the accidents, anything. And you can do this for a long time. But here what we do is that we'll take, we'll do it three times. Take then three deep breaths. Okay, you take in and then as you breathe out, imagine that now the whatever, the snakes, cough and so forth, which enter through your left nostril, they are now eating up your heart. Okay, this is what we're going to do three times. Okay, let's do that. Okay, next we will take the suffering change. Suffering change, we are taking the suffering change in the form of the, the pleasant feelings in the form of the bait, how they deceive us. So that bait you are taking from all the beings in the form of black torrents, snakes, scorpions, so forth, and eating your heart inside. Okay, three times.
Okay, next, we'll take the suffering of the pervasive condition of suffering in the form of the loss of freedom. For example, say somebody's in a prison, there's no freedom. Prisoner is forcefully is being the force to do the labor work, so hard labor work, no freedom. So this exactly is what is happening. Pervasive condition of suffering, involuntary birth, no freedom from samsara, no freedom from samsara. All these things of all sentient beings, all samsara beings, you are sucking them in the form of black suit and so forth, as snakes, scorpions, and so forth, then getting get through your left nostril, eating your heart, and then if you feel the itch, the freedom of the fear and so forth, you you you, you should be feeling so happy that no, now this is now my self the energy is being attacked. Okay, three times. Now imagine that all the beings, they are free from the suffering, 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 change, pervasive condition, suffering, they are free. They are feeling such a relaxation, they are feeling such a relief. Just feel that and feel the joy over you, over you having done this practice. Okay, now come out of the practice, come out of meditation, now we will go to the, the next, which is the step number five. What is step number five? <laughs> Giving happiness to others with the emphasis on loving kindness. So the idea is that now the step four, you were thinking of, step four, you were thinking of how the beings are suffering because of the three kinds of the pains, three kinds of sufferings. Now, step five, we have to think of how the beings are deprived of happiness. How the beings are deprived of happiness. Because they are deprived of happiness, because they are deprived of happiness, then you give happiness to them. Give happiness to them. What do you give? What do you give? You give. Giving is generosity. Give means generosity. Generosity, there are four kinds. Four kinds of generosity. Right? Generosity, therefore, kindness. Okay. Um, usually, we think of generosity as material resources to give money, give food, so forth. This is this is only one kind of generosity known as generosity of material resources. There are four generosities. Number one, generosity of material resources. Number one. Number two, generosity of love and affection. Number three, generosity of protection. Number four, generosity of dharma. Okay, let me say this again. Generosity of material resources. Generosity of love and affection. Generosity of protection. Generosity of dharma. Four. Okay. So first, the generosity of, what's the first one? Generosity of material resources. So when you do this, so what you do is that, okay, just feel, first feel the tremendous love and affection of all sentient beings. Right? And then see that you are they are deprived. They are deprived of the material resources. For example, we see there's so, there are so many the homeless the homeless people. And there are so many people in the, you know, the say the, the poor countries and because of the wars uh, so they are deprived of food they don't get any access to food and so forth and they don't have say the, the medical okay medical is fine so more the the food the, the, the money the education facilities and so forth so uh, with this then they are deprived of these things and then I'm giving but you give, imagine that whatever you have, material resources, and then your virtues, 
material resources are the, 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 the material resources are the results of your practice of what? Practice of generosity, practice of the first, even material material resources to to others. So all your virtues, virtues and the material actual material resources that you have, imagine that you are giving them to all beings and they go out as you breathe out. As you breathe out, imagine that they go out in the form of nectars, very soothing. <coughs> Very soothing light through your right nostril. They go out, they go out, and they spread to all the beings who are deprived of the material resources. Right? Hunger, so the lack of shelter, lack of clothing, and so forth. So then what happens? These nectars and the white the, the, the nectars and the lights, they go out, these they touch the beings who are deprived of material resources. They turn into material resources like houses, food, clothing, the facilities what they need. They imagine that these they change into the material resources, then they are comforted. Okay, this is what we do. Do one. What is next? Generosity, loving kindness. Many people they suffer because of lack of love and affection from others. Lack of love and affection from others. And particularly people who go through depression. Depression. There are the same depression, there are many factors. One could be genetic. Genetic. One could be because of the say problem with the the, the neural wirings, because of the, the neuron problem with the, 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 the neurons, right? Because when you go through all the say when you go through Difficult situation all the time, hearing bad news, difficult situation, hearing bad news like this. Then the, your brain is slowly being rewired. Brain is being rewired. Synaptic connections are being, you know, synaptic connections, new synaptic connections are formed. And then these are what? They will create um, the metal correlate, metal correlate of depression. Okay, this is what is happening. One. Then number two is say temporary depression. Temporary depression simply simply because of you going through you know bad things often. Then your mind becomes stress, more stress, more stress. Eventually you go into depression. So oftentimes people they feel so low. People they feel lack of confidence. Uh, people they lose confidence. They have no self-esteem, they go into depression. These mostly, mostly they are because of the lack of love and affection of mothers. Right? So therefore, generosity is not necessary. That generosity means that you should have something, you should be rich to give to somebody else. Not necessary. You can give love and affection to others. Right? But be very careful. You should be very careful with this. Right? Okay. So here what you may imagine is that as you breathe out again, imagine that again your 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 virtues, particularly your love and affection, it goes through, goes out in the form of in the form of say the, the nectars and soothing lines. And they just they spread across the universe. They the moment they touch the beings who are deprived of love and affection, who go through depression, stress, tension, feeling low, low self-esteem, so forth. The mere touch, right? They become like they they become yourself, 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 right? You manifest like millions and trillions of manifestations that touch with these beings. Then you manifest them. You know, you manifest in the form of yourself, in the form of say the, some people who like to who like to. Uh, see, you know, the, the other person like Arepana, Arepajushri, Arepajushriya, Arepajushri, like this, then whatever whatever appearances will help the being, other beings to feel consoled, to be feel consoled, to be feel the, say, uplifted, and the, the stress, depression, anxiety, the, the feeling of low, they all disappear. So whatever appearance suits them, it just make them appear in that form. This is the, the generosity of love and affection. This is how we practice it. Number two. Verse number three. 
and generosity of protection. Okay, protection of life. The people, animals, insects, they go through the threat to the life. And okay, Diana, you can come here, Diana, you can come here. Yeah, it's very hot. No, come here, otherwise you slowly go there. <laughs> That's better. You need a table? Yes. Grab it. Grab it. Table. Yes. Okay. Good. So now the generosity of the generosity of protection. So the for example, say the okay. Say people in the hospital. Terminal illness in the hospices, then the people in the hands of terrorists, the victims of the terrorist terrorism, and then the in the slaughterhouse, KFC, right? And then say the in the price hotels. Okay, this is a pathetic situation. Once I was in Australia, I was in Australia and went to, from, for a meal I went there in a restaurant and uh, the, suddenly I saw one aquarium, aquarium where you keep the fish and aquarium is not really, is not beautiful. In India they are all very beautiful aquariums, right? According to the size, size-wise, the fish are there. The fish are not, so the aquarium very small, the fish very big fish. No, fish are very small, very cute in, in India. I've never, actually, literally, I've never seen in India, I've never seen such an aquarium, a small one with big fish, big crab, like this, not at all nice to look at. It really struck me, there's something wrong with this, right? Something wrong with this. It's a very small aquarium, but with big fish there, it cannot really swim. And the crabs, big crabs, the big crabs are there. This is not really an aquarium. This is never what I've seen before. In India, it's so beautiful. What is this? Then, I ordered my food. I was eating my food. And then the, one of the, the cooks, one of the chefs came. And I asked the chef, what is this? I asked him. And he was shocked. He was shocked. Why is this person asking me this? He said, right? He said that for him it's just common. So he said, what is this yes, sir? To eat. It's not a aquarium for decoration. It's for just to eat. Right? Then after a while, after about a few minutes later, the chef came. And then pick up one crab, then take to the took to the kitchen. This is what's happening, right? So therefore, the point is that look at say how many times we have taken birth like these animals. We have, we have suffering terribly like this, and what's the pain like for us? Even to have a small cut is so painful, and they they are being boiled alive. You know, so painful, so painful. Think of this, think of this, and then imagine. Uh, okay, this is one thing. Then they say the um, okay. So the point, and then of course you you have seen many of the clips of how the terrorists they kill the victims. You know, with the sword. Okay, and then in the wars, how many people die? But then in the KFC, how many poor chickens die? Um, millions and millions a day, they die, right? Okay, so here what we do is that uh, the imagine that, say, the, as we breathe out, is given protection now, protection to them. And then in the hospitals, those suffering from terminal illness, then in the hospices, those who are going through the last days of their life, just we, as we breathe out, 
Imagine that you are sending all your virtues, your virtues, because the virtues, virtues will give you, give rise to longevity, give protection, save you. Non virtues will kill you, virtues will save you. So you send your virtues to all the beings. And if, so two ways of doing it. If you if you it is if it is too overwhelming, then do it very gently. Do it very gently. Imagine that, for example, the terrorists, the the, the captives, the victims in the hands of the, the terrorists. Imagine that you send you the nectars and the lights and the mere the nectars they touch, the, the terrorists, terrorists they change the mind and then let go the the victim. The victim meet with their parents, with their children. They're so happily reunited. And then in the KFC also, all the poor chickens, they were, you know, they say somehow you, you are, say the virtues, they go there. And then the people who they are responsible for all these killings, all these slaughters, um, they, they might change or, okay, now we will go for another way of living rather than live on killing the poor chickens. Chickens always sent to the the sanctuary, safe sanctuary, so they are, they meet with their mother, with the, you know, the chickens like this, they are so happy. And then likewise, say the people in the hospices, in the terminal illness, miraculously, because of your virtues, miraculously, they, they recover from the illness, right? Illness. What was that thing? I, in... In Singapore, I think, in Singapore, um, there was one lady who told me that her mother died three times, right? <coughs> three times she miraculously came out. They were, she was already on the way to be taken to the funeral, funeral was done. And then from the funeral side, she got up and everybody was so scared, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, and then she, she came along. And second time, people became hesitant. She died second time, after again a few years. And then people became hesitant to do to, to the funeral directly. So they kept there for some time, for extra few days. Again she got up. Right? Third time she left. Okay, so the point is, the point is that these things are actually happening. So there what we do is that as we breathe out, Right? As we breathe out, this is a more gentle way of doing it, more gentle. Some people, when you do the extreme side, it can be really overwhelming. It can give you a burnout feelings and the, it may make you go into depression, right? So therefore, so just see which is more the suitable to you. Extreme would be, extreme one would be that, for example, say the, the crab, Picked up, imagine that the cook is picking up the crab and on the verge to put it on the boiling oil. Then you go there, right? Your nectar is go there, and the nectar is to change into yourself. You I change and tell the cook that if you really want to if you really want to boil someone into oil, boil me, not this crab. Right? And let the crab go, let the crab be released, meet with the mother, with the, the children, whatever, they are very happy. And the cook, imagine that the cook is now throwing you into the oil. Right? Well, and then what's the feeling like, right? Okay, so this could be quite overwhelming. Quite overwhelming. It is, if it's too much, don't do it. Don't do it. Whereas those who can do it, do it. <clears throat> because that would have a direct effect on the self centered attitude. The moment you feel like this, you know, sudden gasping, right? Which means that. The self center attitude is attacked. But if it goes to extreme, you can go into depression. This is not good, right? So just see which is more uh, suitable. And then the terrorists, the victims, the terrorists, instead of the terrorists, change the mind and then they, they are released. Instead of that, the extreme side would be you can tell the terrorists, if you really want to you have to kill someone, kill me rather than release this person. And the person is released, meet with the mother. Meet with the children, they are so happy, and the church imagine the church killing you, right? And when the church killing you, what's it feeling like? Like this, this feeling. When this feeling comes, what is happening is that self-centered attitude is attacked, right? 
Okay. But you don't have to worry, there is not the nearby you. If the terrorist comes, run away. <coughs> right? So therefore the point is that keep in mind that you are actually not being the your throat is not being the, the slit, but you mentally do it. You getting it? Okay. This is what we do. This is the generosity of protection. And finally, finally generosity of dharma. Right? Okay. Generosity with dharma, I personally do it in four ways. There are a number of, there are so many fours, twos, threes, right? Okay, I do it in four ways. Generosity with dharma, four ways. Okay. Generosity with dharma, four ways. Number one, the generosity with dharma of the renunciation, dharma of bodhicitta, dharma of the wisdom of emptiness, and the dharma of the non-dual wisdom of emptiness and bliss. Okay, let me say this again. Dharma of renunciation, dharma of bodhicitta, dharma of wisdom of emptiness, and the dharma of the non-dual wisdom and non-dual wisdom of bliss and emptiness. Four. Shall I repeat it? Huh? Okay, dharma of generous, the what? The dharma of renunciation, the dharma of bodhicitta, the dharma of wisdom of emptiness, and the dharma of the, <coughs> the wisdom of no, no, the dharma of the non-dual wisdom of the bliss and emptiness, the dharma of non-dual wisdom. Oh, what did you say? Dharma of the wisdom of non-dual. No, the dharma of the non-dual wisdom of bliss and emptiness. The dharma of dharma of non-dual wisdom of bliss and emptiness. Julia is fine. You are fine, Julia. Okay. Wow. Okay, Ola, you will come here. Are you sure? Good. You are you sure? Come here, come. Yes, you can move there. Wonderful. That's good. That's worse. <laughs> okay. So now, uh, the four, right? Let us try to make sense of what we are doing. Let us make let us try to make sense of what you're doing. Okay. Why four? Not just randomly picked up. Right? Why four? One. What we don't want is what? What do you don't want? Suffering. I don't want suffering. Suffering, right? Opposite of getting the same. For, for one to be free from suffering, for one to be free from suffering, one should practice renunciation. Renunciation doesn't mean renunciation renoun to renounce your happiness. Renunciation means to renounce your miseries. You're getting it? Renounce your miseries. Okay. Renounce your miseries. Primarily, primarily, this renunciation, practice renunciation, is primarily to get rid of harming others. Harming others. Right? Then harming others is related to self-centered attitude. Harming others is related to attachment also. Right? The mainly is to stop harming others. Related to harming others, whatever is there, get rid of this also attachment. Right? Oftentimes harming others is because of the attachment. You feel attached to something, you are not getting it, and somebody else is getting it, you feel jealous, and then you you harm others. You are getting it? Okay. So, harming others, you stop harming others, automatically you are free from suffering. So, renunciation, associated with the renunciation is the practice of stopping harming others. You're getting it? 
Okay. One. So once once your misery stops, then what do you want? Okay. Two things, right? One thing is what you don't want. I don't want miseries. Number two, what do you want? I want happiness, maximum happiness. You're getting it? Two things. So what you don't want, I don't want miseries. If you don't want miseries, renounce miseries. Renouncing miseries is renunciation. What do you want? I want maximum happiness. Maximum happiness will be given to you by bodhicitta. So practice bodhicitta. You're getting it? Tell me. Verse number three. Wisdom of emptiness. Okay. Now with the first one is renunciation. Renunciation, there is a goal. Bodhicitta, there is a goal. What is the goal of renunciation? Huh? What is the goal of renunciation? Free from suffering. What is the goal of bodhicitta? What is the goal of bodhicitta? To become Buddha. You can get hey, After learning the, the day one, you are so active. You are you know you are jumping higher than what I expected. Day three, you are slow down. <laughs> right? And day three you should be jumping more. Okay, tell me, what is the goal of bodhicitta? What goal of bodhicitta is in the definition of bodhicitta. What's the definition? What's the meaning of bodhicitta? Altruistic intention to become Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings, right? You have to have the meaning, the definition of bodhicitta. The altruistic intention to become Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings. So, what is the goal? To become Buddha, to achieve Buddhahood. Okay. What is the goal of the renunciation? To achieve liberation from suffering. What is the goal of bodhicitta? Buddhahood. These two goals will be materialized only through the wisdom of emptiness. The two goals of the first two aspirations, renunciation, bodhicitta, the two goals will be accomplished only through the wisdom of emptiness. So therefore, number three is wisdom of emptiness. You understand it? Good. Now the next point. What is the next point? The non-dual wisdom of bliss and emptiness. Okay. Say. Okay. Say. You are. Say. You. Uh, you. You are. You want to. You want to run a business, right? The cultural center is becoming very popular now, right? So you want to run a small restaurant next by, next to cultural center, a guest house, small guest house. And you don't have the what? You don't have the money to run money to start the start it. So I said that I will I will I will lend you I'll lend you money. You are happy? Not happy? Okay, I promise I'll lend you money. Right? I'll lend you money. Okay, I'll lend you money after ten years. You're not happy. Okay, then when when do you want me to lend you the money? When? When do you ma hey Virginia tell me? Now. Now, right? Not after ten years. You want it as soon as possible. You're getting it? Liberation from suffering, liberation from the miseries, and both of them, I want to achieve it as soon as possible. Right? As soon as possible, not after ten years, not after ten lifetimes. As soon as possible. As soon as possible, this path must be expedited. You must have this path very fast. To make the path fast, we need the fourth one. What's the fourth one? The wisdom, the non-dual wisdom of bliss and emptiness. This is Tantra. You're getting it? This is Tantra. To expedite the path. To expedite the path, they should be the path, right? To, to expedite the path, they should be the path. Some people, they expedite the path without the path. Right? They want to cook, they want to cook, they want to cook food very quickly. There's no ingredients. Without the ingredients, they want to cook the food very fast, right? People without both the renunciation, both the emptiness, they will jump into tantra, which means it's totally baseless. So therefore, we need, you know, tantra makes sense only if you have the renunciation, 
bodhicitta and wisdom frontiers. Without these three things, going for tantra is just meaningless. Don't forget it. This is so important. Okay. So now when we give <coughs> when we give give the dharma, given the dharma of renunciation, given the dharma of bodhicitta, given the dharma of the Vismantinus, and given the dharma of the non-dual wisdom of bliss and emptiness. Right? So this is how we give. Okay. So this we will do tomorrow. The practice tomorrow. Okay. Was no mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful generous, the tents and castle, please remain until samsara ends. Just as a brave Manjushri and summoned about the two realize things as they are, also I dedicate all these merits in the best way that I may follow the perfect example. I dedicate all this merit, use of merit virtue with the dedication praise of the best by all the Buddhas who appeared in the three times, so that I might perform the noble Bodhisattva's deeds. May the Supreme Bodhicitta, which has not risen in the rising room, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase forevermore. As long as space remains, as long as sentient beings remain, until then may I truly remain with the spirit mysteries of the world. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the seal of Guru Buddha and lead all beings without exception into their enlightened state. I dedicate the merit thus gathered towards the realization of the deeds and the prayers of all the present bodhisattvas of the three times and of upholding the Dharma of teaching and realization. And may it all arise through the force of this marriage, never separated from the four wheels of the Mahana vehicle, and accomplish all the stages of the path, renunciation, bodhicitta, perfect in the two stages. But I wish to free all beings, I shall always go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha until I reach for not. In spite of wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I chant the mind full of awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. I go for refuge with the Triple Gem, I confess the negativities individually, I rejoice in the virtues of all the pains of all the precious blood in my heart. The part of union of emptiness and compassion is loosely explained by the protector of both the Dharma and the beings of the land, where the Lord is that tells him that so we subjugate you that you wish to fulfill spontaneously. May the operations of evil thoughts and deeds of the negative forces, humans or non humans, who hold the minus to perverted prayers, Against the teachings of the Buddhas, they truly vanquish through the power of the truth of the three jewels. In all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, may enjoy the magnificent dharma by completing the qualities of the stages of the Mahans, may I quickly attain the state of Ashatara. Throughout my future life times, may always be guided by a magistry and be able to uphold the dharma in general and the teachings of the Hanuman genius in particular, even in personal life. Okay, three prescriptions.